1063 here in Lafayette, Louisiana, 70501. Our hotline is open 24-7-337-593 Umoja. Sing a song. Full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. Facing the rising sun. Let us march on till victory is won. Thank you, Sister Kaniqua. That was beautiful. We will now have presentations um, to Dr. Collier. Okay. Well, there has been a change of plans. We will do that after the ceremony. We will have presentations afterwards. For those of you who wanted to make those presentations to Dr. Collier, we would like to recognize at this time our guest that we have with us this evening, our very special guest. We have visiting with us this evening Minister Robert Muhammad. He is the Southwest Regional Minister and Minister of Mosque Number 45 in Houston, Texas. We have visiting Minister Harold Muhammad. <laughs> Minister Harold Muhammad of Mosque Number 46 in New Orleans, Louisiana. Minister Rashid Muhammad, Minister of Mosque Number 65 in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. <laughs> Minister Lyle X, Minister of the Lafayette Study Group. <laughs> we also have Brother Hillman X of Shreveport, Louisiana. Sister Stanley, Sister Stanley X of Hammond, Louisiana. <laughs> Brother Chris X, who is the Nation of Islam's student president of the Nation of Islam's Student Association at Grambling State University. <laughs> we have Minister Ted X of Monroe, Louisiana. Minister Delane X of Fourth Wirt, Texas. <laughs> Brother Chris X, he, who leads the study group of Alexandria, Louisiana. <laughs> we also have seated for Father, I'm sorry, Brother Alfred McZeal, organizer of Southern Consumers Co-op here in Lafayette, Louisiana. 
Father A.J. McKnight, founder of Southern Consumers Co-op here in Lafayette, Louisiana. <laughs> Father Carlos E. Harvin, pastor of Imani Temple, number 49, located here in Lafayette, Louisiana. <laughs> Brother Takuna El Shabazz, publisher of The Rising Seed here in Lafayette, Louisiana. We also have Sister Janelle Shagwa, who is the director, manager of KJCB Radio here in Lafayette, Louisiana. <laughs> and we have Councilman Chris Williams, who, is city, who is, sits on the city council here in Lafayette, Louisiana. Now we'll move on to the event you've all been waiting for. I'm sorry, I forgot Brother Donald Fugile, who is a practicing attorney here in town. Thank you. <laughs> Being a member of AACC, we have been gearing up for this evening for what seems to have been a very long time. And we are so proud that tonight we have all of you here to share this evening with us. It's wonderful to see that this room has been filled. And it has, it has also come to my attention that the next room that we had a satellite transferred into that room has also been filled. <laughs> and there are still people waiting to get in. <laughs> Well, he's back. <laughs> Lord child, right. Lord have mercy, Lord Jesus, Khalid is back. Right. And you know that we have been waiting for this moment for a long time. They told us it couldn't be done. They said he couldn't come back. But he's, we have proof tonight that he could. And that's what happens when students, and I would like to commend the AACC committee, the students. <laughs> for those of you who don't know, these students stood up for what they believed in. They did not allow the media, the faculty, the administration, or anyone else in the community to decide who should be their leaders. They took it upon themselves. And they said, we want Dr. Khalid. And Dr. Khalid is back. So without further ado, because I can't wait to hear him speak, <laughs> I bring to you our brother, my brother, your brother, the doctor, Khalid Muhammad. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, all praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all the worlds. I bear witness that regardless to land or label or language, there is but one God. And so in the name of that one God who came as it was written and prophesied that he would come, to seek and to save that which was lost. And we can find no other people 
fitting the description of the Bible prophecy of the lost brother, the lost sister, or the lost sheep, except we, the 50 million or more, mentally and spiritually dead, black men and black women here in the hells of North America. And so we thank him for coming, his power, his force, his spirit in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, to whom praise is due forever. And we thank him for raising up his messenger and his messiah, that little black man from Sandersville, Georgia. I speak of none other than the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. And we thank the two of them for the man who we believe and know to be the champion for the liberation and salvation of the black nation, for the resurrection and rise of our people. I speak of none other than the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. In their names, I greet you. In their names, I greet you here at the University of Southwestern Louisiana as the guest of the African-American Cultural Committee. To Sister Darlene, to Brother Carl, to Brother Saba, to Minister Lyle X, and to the Southwestern Regional Minister and Representative functioning in that capacity from Mosque Number 45 in Houston, Texas, that dynamic and powerful minister, Minister Robert Muhammad to Father Carlos Harvin, to Father McKnight, who we will always see as Father McKnight, and I hope he is here this evening. <laughs> and please send our love and our greetings to His Grace, Archbishop George Augustus Stalin. Well, I'm happy to be black again <laughs> at the University of Southwestern Louisiana. The students always give me these topics that get other folks in trouble. <laughs> the subject you have given me, the theme to work from during this black history celebration, and as quiet as it's kept, no longer Black History Month, but Black History Year, I'm saying, Black History Year. Oh, there it is. This Black History Year celebration, white people give us one month out of the year, the shortest they could find, to celebrate our greatness, our glory, our honor, and to celebrate our infinite history when 12 months out of the year, we must study their moment in time. We can no longer accept this. We can no longer accept a Black History Day, a Black History Week, or a Black History Month, knowing that we are the father and mother of all who walk on the face of the planet Earth today. We are your mother and we are your father. And so the students have given me the subject, wake up, the revolution continues. Wake up, the revolution continues. And so tonight I will serve as an alarm clock. The alarm clock to wake you up and shake you up and clean you up and stand you up by the power of Almighty God the teaching and program of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Now let me get this straight before I even get started, guys. <laughs> Look, it's gonna be a rough ride, buddy. Do the white 
tonight to in the audience and in particular our good friends from print and electronic media. Buckle your seat belts, guys. <laughs> if for any reason this auditorium becomes depressurized, oxygen masks would automatically fall from the ceiling. Place the elastic band around your head and place the cup firmly over your mouth and nose and breathe normally and help the white reporter next to you. <laughs> but on the serious side, and for the time being, I'm the captain in this cabin tonight and the seatbelt sign is on, straight up. <laughs> on a more serious note, to the whites who are in the audience, I want to say to you, we did not come to the University of Southwestern Louisiana to teach black students to hate white people, but we did come to the University of Southwestern Louisiana to teach you to love your black self. That's what we're here for here tonight. That's why we're here. All praise is due to Allah. And let me be clear on this. Let me be clear on this. For those of you who would like to know, inquiring minds want to know. Where does college stand on the Farrakhan question? Let me clear that up before we even get started. My faith, my commitment, my loyalty, is unyielding, unbending, unswerving, and I'm sure unnerving to most. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is my spiritual father. He is my leader, he is my teacher, and he is my guide. And like any good son, I accept the judgment, I accept the discipline of my father. Sorry to disappoint you guys. She went, sorry. Far out, guys. There is no split in the nation of Islam. There is no division in the nation of Islam. 30 years ago, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad and his spiritual son, Minister Malcolm X, El Hajj Malik El Shabazz, Brother Omar Wali, 30 years ago, because of a speech that Brother Malcolm made on the East Coast when he made the statement as he spoke from that subject, God's judgment on white America. He made the statement that John Fitzgerald Kennedy, the then President of the United States, that his assassination was a case of the chickens coming home to roost. And Malcolm said, chickens coming home to roost never made me sad, always made me glad. And because of that speech at the Manhattan Center 30 years ago, almost at this very same time, Malcolm was disciplined by his spiritual father. And I'm standing before you here tonight not to say that I am anywhere near the equal of my big brother, Malcolm, whom I never met. Most of us were either too young or not even born but because of the rich life and legacy of Malcolm X, El Hajj Malik El Shabazz, I can walk a little better after Malcolm, draw from the good of Malcolm's life that nobody can deny and no one can take from him and learn from any steps that Malcolm might have made then 30 years ago that I should not make today. So there is no division, no split, because of all our studies, history is best qualified and most attractive to reward our research. If we know what happened yesterday, then we can intelligently discuss today, because today is built on yesterday, and tomorrow is built on today. And if we know what happened yesterday, we are not likely to let the same thing happen or go down today. 
he or she who does not learn the lessons of history is doomed to repeat them. And so a 30-year history, a 30-year cycle, Malcolm and his father, Elijah, Khaled and his father, Farrakhan, today, we must put a positive period behind that 30-year history and cycle and make sure that it never repeats itself again. Yes, I am hurt. Yes, it's, it's a trying time for me, but I'm a soldier, and I follow a divine chain of command, and we don't always understand orders that come from the command center, but what difference does it make? A soldier salutes and goes on with the orders of the commanding officer, and make no mistake about it, Louis Farrakhan is the commanding officer today. To the whites who are in the audience, you don't have to worry about our message being a message that will teach whites here in this audience in a way that will inflame you, or a message that will teach blacks in a way that will inflame them. I must say to you, the whites who are here, we could never quite treat you the way you treated us because God just didn't make us that way. God didn't make us that way. We could never treat you the way you treated us. I'm not silly enough to come here to the University of Southwestern Louisiana and think that I can get up here and say some words that are going to make black people hate white people. After 6,000 years, after 400 years in specific, if all of the deeds and actions of white people have not made you hate them, how in the heck could I get up here and say some words that would make you hate white people? I'm not that silly. I'm not that silly. I'm not going to get up here and think I can wave a magic microphone. Shazam! Abra! Cadabra, hocus pocus, and all of a sudden you're going to walk out hating white folks. To those over in, what, what's the hall on this campus? Martin Hall. Let me talk to you guys. <laughs> on the college campus, on the university campus here, Martin Hall is like City Hall. Martin Hall is like downtown. Martin Hall, in another sense, is like the governor's place. Or in another sense of a microcosm of the macrocosm, Martin Hall is like the White House. <laughs> and you are citizens, and you are citizens, second-class citizens, at the University of Southwestern Louisiana. I came in, I eased in on the white folks. They were looking for me, but I came in incognito. <laughs> I eased in incognito and did my own research. I talked to the students and sample the thinking of the students and the students say you treat them like second class students and citizens here, the black students on this campus. But you call me a hater. You call me a racist. You call me a bigot and an anti-Semite. You've heard a lot about me, but you haven't heard from me. And it's time you get acquainted with me. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad and the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan teach us to be polite, to be courteous, to be respectful to all people, especially the downtrodden black man and black woman, but they teach us to be polite, to be respectful, to be courteous, to be kind to brown people, red people, yellow people, white people, no matter what color they are. They teach us to be respectful as long as you are respectful to us. All praise is due to Allah. 
No, this is a love revival here tonight. A love revival. I mean, look at it, wall to wall black. Wall to wall black. So the whites who are in the audience, I'm going to keep the seat belts on for the seat belt sign on for a little while longer, guys. But you just sit back and chill, relax. Everything is going to be all right. I didn't say all white. I said all right. Awake. The revolution continues. It is written in the scriptures, there's a lion asleep in Judah. Who will awaken him? A lion asleep in Judah. Who will awaken him? In the book of Genesis in the 15th chapter. Genesis the 15th chapter. Let me turn to it here for a moment. It reads, starting with the 12th verse. And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and lo, and horror of great darkness fell upon him. And God said unto Abram, as Abram fell into this deep sleep, know of a surety, Abram, that thy seed shall be strangers in a land that is not there and they shall serve them, and they shall oppress them and afflict them for four hundred years. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge, and afterwards shall they come out with great riches and great substance. In the book of John, in the 11th chapter of the book of John, Starting with the first verse, moving down to the 44th verse, it talks about a man named Lazarus. What's his name? Oh, you got to talk back to me, talk black to me. This is in the Southern tradition, call and response. A man named what? All right, you got to speak up. I know Bill is here. Jill. But Bill and Jill is going to chill. They'll be all right, so you don't have to worry about them. I'm not going to insult Bill and Jill. So you can respond, okay? A man named Lazarus. The book says that Lazarus had been dead, some writers say, asleep for four days. Mary and Martha, his sisters, representing from a scriptural type, the black woman. We sing the song in the church. What's our sister's name that sang the anthem? Sister Taniqua. Did she blow? Give her a black hand. Give her a hand. Oh, this is a love revival here. Our sister sang from her soul. We sing the song in the church. Oh, Mary, don't you weep. Oh, Martha, don't you moan. Mary was weeping and Martha was mourning. And the shortest verse in the Bible, Jesus wept. Meaning Jesus did what? Cry. You know that verse. Because when you're down here in the south, you better say your blessing before you reach your hand on your mama's table for a piece of that cornbread or a piece of that chicken or your favorite vegetables that's on the table. You got to say a blessing. So you got your eye on whatever it is, one eye closed and one eye on it, and you say, Jesus wept, and you reach on the table. So if we don't know that verse for any other reason, we know it for that reason. The shortest verse in the Bible. Mary is weeping, Martha is moaning, and Jesus wept. What would make the master cry? The scriptures say Jesus was crying. Because Lazarus, some say, was asleep. Others say because Lazarus was dead. Look at it. Lazarus being dead for four days represents, so teaches the most honorable Elijah Muhammad and the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan, 
It represents the condition of the black man and woman being dead in a grave of ignorance, slavery, suffering, and death for 400 years. Mary and Martha, the woman, they were not quite in the same shape that the man was in. They were the ones who showed Jesus, the master, where Lazarus was. And they said, Master, if you would have been here, then he would never have died. Jesus said, go and show me where he is. And Jesus went to the grave of Lazarus and said, Lazarus, come forth. Loose him. Let him go. Lazarus came out of the grave after 40 days with a napkin over his face and over his eyes and grave clothes on. That represents the wretched and terrible condition of the black man and black woman here in the hells of North America. Now let me get this straight too before I go any further. When I say Jesus, you hear me? Can you hear me? As quiet as his cap. When I say Jesus, I'm not talking about no blonde-haired, blue-eyed, pale skin, buttermilk complexion Jesus that was given to us by the white man. The nerve of you to call me a hater, to call me a racist, and to call me a bigot when you alter the word of God and take it out of context and give us a white Jesus when the Bible says that Jesus would have hair like ram's wool. I'm talking about nappy hair. I'm talking about that good hair. I'm talking about a nappy hair, good hair Jesus here tonight. Just like your hair used to be before you got your scary curl. Or before you took your hair and made it fried and dyed and laid to the side. Or before you got your temporary permanent. Pay full price for something that's temporary, know it's temporary, and call it permanent. In Louisiana, we used to be able to go back under the back. We used to be able to look under the back, what they call the kitchen. But now you set the kitchen on fire and burnt the kitchen up. So we don't know what's happening. But the Bible says that Jesus would have hair like pure wool. Pure wool. He would have hair like pure wool. One scripture says his body would be like jasper. Another scripture says his body would be like burl. Another scripture says his body would be like fine brass. Fine bronze as though it had been burnt in an oven. Here in Louisiana, I dare to come and say that I'm talking about a black Jesus. I'm talking about a black Lord. I'm talking about a black Savior, a black Redeemer, a black Son of the living God. Don't bring me no blonde-haired, blue-eyed, pale-skinned, white Jesus that the white man gave to us. But you don't even understand, many of you, the whites how racist you really are. You give us a picture with 13 white men sitting down at the table <laughs> and tell us that that's the last supper. No wonder we hungry here. We ain't got nothing to eat that day. I don't want to insult anyone here tonight, but let me say, to the whites in the audience, and you are overhearing this conversation with them. Look, guys, can we reason together? Tonight, just sit back, relax, and listen, and open up your minds and hearts, and let's reason as the Bible says. Let's reason together. You give us a picture with 13 white men at the table. The Bible says God is no respecter of person. Where's the Chinese at the table? Where's the Japanese at the table? Where's the Chicano at the table? Huh? Where's the blue black African at the table? Where's the woman at the table? 
that it's not only racism, but it's sexism. It's not only racism, but it's sexism, but the white male and the white mind and the white psyche. Let's reason together. This is not hate, but this is a mirror. And I must put the mirror up in front of your face so that you can see yourself. And to the blacks who are here tonight, I must be an alarm clock so that you can wake up because the revolution continues. Let's look at it. Let's look at it. No woman at the table. No people of color at the table. Thirteen white men, and you want us to accept it? You don't see the racism in that? Look at it. Young white Jewish students, reason with me, please. What young white Jewish student would want to pick up a history book or a textbook with Adolf Hitler honored, praised as the founding father of the land? and as the first president of the land. No young white Jewish student would accept that. None of their parents would accept it. Their clergy and respected rabbis would not accept it. But look at your racism. Look at how you slap us in the face and then expect us to accept it. George Washington, the first president of these United States, the founding father, Andrew Jackson, Thomas Jefferson owned slaves. They sold their own babies into slavery. They would rape the black woman, the black slave woman in the old shack in the back. Rape our great, great, great grandmothers. Rape our great grandmothers in some cases. And wherever they would impregnate them and produce a baby by them, they would sell their own children for kegs of molasses and barrels of syrup and whiskey and rum. George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Andrew, you know Andrew. George, Georgie, and Tommy, you know these guys. But you call my teacher the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. You call my spiritual father the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan. You call us racist. You call us haters. When your very existence reeks with racism. <laughs> the soil of the state of Louisiana is drenched with the blood of the black man, black woman, and black child. It's shaped like a boot, and you've kept this big boot in our backside ever since you brought us here. But you want to ignore your history. And when somebody reminds you of what you did and start telling their people awake, the revolution continues. You call us reverse racists. You just as silly as you can be. You! The rest of you, you're just silly. Will you reason with me? You with me? Slave master, beating the hell out of the slave. Rip the slave's old, worn, torn, and tattered clothes off the slave's back. Beat the slave and beat the slave with the old cat of nine tails and the whip. Blood running down the slave's back, forming a puddle of blood at the slave's feet. Beat the slave to the slave's knees until the slave falls down on the ground and his blood or her blood mixes with the dirt on the ground and the blood and the dirt turn to mud. Beat the slave and then take salt and rub the salt in the wounds of the slave. One day God Almighty blessed the slave to struggle up to his feet, to her feet, 
stand up like a woman and stand up like a man and look the slave master in his cold eyes and snatch the whip from the slave master and start whipping the slave master with his own whip. Does that make the slave... Does that make the slave a reverse slave master? How many say it does not make the slave a reverse slave master? Let me see your hand. Hold them high, let me see. Don't worry, you won't lose your jobs tomorrow. <laughs> That's the whole house. The slave is not interested in making the slave master a slave. The slave is not interested in ruling over the slave master. The slave just wants to stop the slave master from beating him. The slave wants what God has instilled in all of us, and that is the feeling and the yearning to breathe free. To the whites who are here, we don't want to rule you. I'm not that kind of foolish black supremacist. You have lied on me and lied on my father and my grandfather, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan. We don't want to misuse whites. We don't want to abuse whites. That's not in us. God didn't make us that way. We don't want to rule and govern white people. We just want to be left alone so we can rule and govern ourselves. That's all. That's all. That's all. Is that too much to ask? Is that too unreasonable? If we have a black hospital and whites come to our hospital, we won't experiment on you like guinea pigs the way you do us. We will treat you fairly and we will treat you justly and we will treat you for whatever it is that is troubling you. Dr. Charles Drew, responsible for blood banks being set up all over the world, saved countless American and allied lives in many wars, and domestically, you still benefit from the blood bank system initiated by Dr. Charles Drew, the black doctor. Dr. Charles Drew in Burlington, down in the, over in the Carolinas, was in a serious automobile accident, bleeding profusely. White America so racist. He is a man that has saved countless, even millions, no doubt, of lives. But the nearest hospital to him was a so-called white hospital. By the time they got him to a so-called colored hospital, Dr. Charles Drew, the black doctor who was responsible for the blood bank system, died needing blood. And you call us a racist? You call us haters? You call us bigots? The state of Louisiana, the white, Christian, church-going, voting population, the white, Christian, church-going, voting population gave David Duke 65 to 70 percent of your vote. And you call us racist? You call us haters? Who call us bigots? No good hypocrites? Lying hypocrites? I'm in a mirror here tonight for the whites and an alarm clock to wake the blacks up. You want to say David Duke is some special fellow, but if he got 65 to 70 percent of your white Bible reading, church going, hymn singing, some kind of spirit filled, church going, voting populations, ballot. What does that say about your thinking? Louisiana? Abraham Lincoln, when you read the memoirs of Abraham Lincoln, he said, if I, could free the, if I could save the Union, bring my people back together and not free the slave, I would do just that. He said, I, as any white man, 
would like to see whites in the superior position. This is the president. He had no great love for black people. He said, if I could save the union and leave the slave in slavery, I would do whatever to bring my people back together. Then he offered to send us all back to Africa. We should have gone. But it wasn't God's plan for us to go. God said we would be strangers in a land that is not ours. For 400 years, oppressed and afflicted, I'm here to tell you tonight that you are the chosen people of God. Make no mistake about it. You are the people who fulfill the Bible prophecies of the chosen of God. He intends to wake us up, clean us up, and stand us up and make us the cornerstone of a new divine spiritual world order called the kingdom of God that is to be established here on this earth. No, I didn't come to teach hate, but I came to teach history. I want to know what happened to Father McKnight. What happened to him? the work he was doing? What happened to him and the work that he was doing among black people? Why did you remove him? Because you had a Catholic priest that would go in and go by the word of God, go by thus saith the Lord, no matter what the racist pressure and white supremacist pressure was, he wasn't going to have a white Mary in the face of his black parishioners. He wasn't going to have a black baby Jesus in the face, I mean, a white baby Jesus. He wanted a black baby Jesus in the face of his parishioners. And so you said we can't use a bold, strong man like that. But, oh, God works in mysterious ways. You got rid of Father McKnight. He laid the groundwork. Huh? He was the pioneer that cut down the underbrush. He blazed the trail. But you didn't know that God was preparing uh, uh, His Grace, Archbishop George Augustus Stalins, and you didn't know. You didn't know that a black woman was going to produce a baby named Carlos. And the Carlos Harvin was coming to town. Oh, it's a new day for Catholicism in this neck of the woods. I consider myself a member of the African-American Catholic congregation. Yes, I do. Because when you know who you are, that's why you got to awake. Wake up when you know who you are, black man and black woman. You know that you are at the root of Catholicism. You're at the root of Islam. You're at the root of Judaism. You're at the root of Christianity. All of it comes from you, black man and black woman. It comes from your soul and from the very core of your being. When the white man was crawling around on his all fours in the caves and hills of Europe, eating juniper roots and eating each other, as Dr. John Henry Clark and Dr. Yusuf bin Yakinen point out, that before the white man ever had a house with a window or knew what a shoe was, you had great civilization. You're the father and mother of civilization. Don't let no fool tell you, Dr. Skulovich, Professor Skuskowski, <laughs> tell you, gee whiz, when we found you guys in Africa, you were buck naked, swinging through the trees, eating bananas and eating each other, and hollering ooga booga. You are an ooga booga lie. She was. We gave you guys the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You didn't give us Jesus. No, the Bible says, out of Egypt have I called my son. Out of Egypt have I called my son. A nappy-headed son of God. 
a black bird skin son of the living God, made in his image and after his likeness. God in the flesh, in the person, coming to dwell among men and women here on this earth, out of Egypt. Egypt coming from the Greek root, Ayaptus, from the Meduneta, or the hieroglyphics of ancient Kemet. The true name for Egypt is Kemet. The blacks, the burnt skin people. Ayaptus, Egypt, the black, the burnt skin people. The hieroglyph or the symbol in the Meduneta for the people of Kemet or the people of Egypt is a black charred burnt piece of wood. A black charred burnt piece of coal. When you study the hieroglyphics as they call it or the Meduneta, that is the symbol for us out of Egypt. Have I called my son? God intends to shut this thing down. Shut it down, Minister Lyle X, representative of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan in this neck of the woods. And their brothers, Lyle, Minister Lyle X and Father Carlos Harvin, they work together. This is one family today. One Lord. One faith, one baptism. Awake, awake, the revolution continues. In order to have a revolution, there must be light. The planet Earth is 196,940,000 square miles. So teaches the most honorable Elijah Muhammad and the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan. 196,940,000 square miles, 57,255,000 square miles of land, coming up out of 139,685,000 square miles of water on a planet that weighs 6 sextillion tons. But it has a revolution. It makes movement and motion at the terrific speed of 1,037 and a third miles per hour, making a complete revolution on its own axis every 23 hours, 56 minutes, and 46 seconds as it makes its way around the sun every 365 and a quarter days. But it is the sun, approximately 853,000 miles in diameter, reaching out through the darkness of space, touching that close planet Mercury, all the way out to that most distant planet Pluto, 4 billion 600 million miles from the sun. But it is the sun's rays, the sun's light, reaching out through the darkness of space, striking the planet at its imaginary equator, setting it in motion, causing revolution, causing movement. You've got to have light, but it's got to be the right light. You've got to have truth. You've got to have light. We must teach the youth the truth. I cannot come on these college campuses and lie to my people just to please white people. I cannot do it. I will never do it. There's no way I will do it. No way. I'm just a truth terrorist. I'm a truth terrorist. I'm a history of black hitman. I'm a knowledge gangster. I gotta be a roughneck. <laughs> I'm saying, I gotta be a roughneck. I gotta be a roughneck. I'm saying, I gotta be a roughneck. Truth terrorists, knowledge gangsters. History of black hit man, rough neck. Strip the enemy buck naked, don't leave him a stitch to hide behind. That's right. That's what time it is. It's wake up time. The alarm is going off. But you gotta have the right light to produce a revolution. Can't be a match light, can't be a candle light, can't be a flashlight. Can't be a spotlight, can't be a floodlight, can't be a bud light.
<laughs> it's got to be the right line in order to set us in motion. The Bible says, let us turn. In the scripture we turn to the book of Isaiah in the 52nd chapter. It says, awake, awake, put on thy strength, O Zion. Put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city. For henceforth there shall no more come into thee the uncircumcised and the unclean. Shake thyself from the dust. Arise, sit down, O Jerusalem. Loose thyself from the bands of thy neck, O captive daughter of Jerusalem. Arise, shake thyself from the dust. The Bible says it's time for you to wake up. Young black man and black woman, black man and black woman in general. It's time for you to wake up. The revolution continues. All over the face of the planet Earth, they're fighting white supremacy. All over the face of the planet Earth, they're fighting racism. And don't tell me that racism is dead. You're a liar and the truth is not in you. The kind of commission. What commission? What commission? The kind of commission, this prestigious, pristine White House presidential commission met close to 30 years ago, convened, and they studied riots and civil disorder. Now, let's stop a minute. Don't let me forget I'm on Kerner Commission. I've got to stop for a minute because they call what we do rioting. Have you never noticed how these guys fix things the way they want it to be. Always semantics. When they kill the Indians and kill the Indians, they kill the men, they kill the women, they kill the children, they kill the babies. They kill the blind, they kill the cripple, they kill the crazy. They wipe the Indians out, burn their teepees down, burn the whole village down. They call that a victory. But if there's one Indian left, and he can go find two more Indians and have enough pride to go and attack the fort and get the white man back, they call that a massacre. <laughs> if the Indian defends himself, it's a massacre. <laughs> but if the white man kills all of the Indians, nothing left but white smoke and white folks, <laughs> they call that a victory. In Los Angeles, when they beat our brother, the police department, those who they say are supposed to protect us and to serve us, the man didn't rob a bank. The man didn't rape anybody. They say it was a common traffic violation, and they beat him within the very inch of his life. And we watched him beating. The world watched him beat him. But the racist state of California could not even get a criminal conviction. And the white policeman bragged about it. And one of them wrote a book bragging about it. Don't tell me that you are, your racism is gone, white folks. Don't tell me that. But they called it rioting. Is that right? Looting. But when white folks went in from the thir into the 13 original colonies, as they call it, split with the British Empire to build them a nation of their own, burning, killing, fighting for their freedom and independence, went into the Boston Harbor, ransacked the boat, the ship, huh? dumped the cargo in the harbor. They call that the Boston Tea Party. <laughs> Give me a break. Give me a break to go and hold onions. This thing is serious. You can burn up everything and kill everybody and dump everything in the, in the harbor, in the water, and you don't call that looting. That's not white folks rioting. That's a tea party. <laughs> well, what happened in Los Angeles was the Los Angeles Tea Party. That's what it was, the Los Angeles Tea Party. I don't worry anymore. I don't think I ever really did. 
about what white folks are going to say about me. What do I care about what you say about me? Or if you say anything, I came to speak to my people. But if you're honest, you didn't hear any hate here. If you're honest, I put a mirror in front of your face for you to analyze yourself and look at yourself. And I came to wake my people up. The Colonel Commission, out of the White House, set up by the President of these United States. They said America is two Americas. This was close to 30 years ago. Two Americas, 25, close to 25. One black and one white. It exceeded the limit of Plessy versus Ferguson, separate but equal. They say it's two Americas, one black, one white, separate and unequal, the Kerner Commission report said, out of the White House. And they went on to say that the number one problem in America close to three decades ago was white racism. Was what? Three decades later, the Kerner Commission reconvened. And they determined that America is still two Americas. One black, one white. 30 years later today, still separate, still unequal. 30 years later, today, the number one problem still in America is white racism. Did Elijah Muhammad work on the Kerner Commission? No. Did Louis Farrakhan work on the Kerner Commission? The most honorable Elijah Muhammad, the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan. Did their little student call it or Minister Harold, or um, the regional minister, Minister Robert. Did we work on the Kerner Commission of Minister Lyle X, Father Carlos Harvard? No. This was the President's Commission. They said the number one problem in America is white racism. Well, how are you going to duck it, buddy? If your own Presidential Commission's research and findings say, now institutional racism is rooted in America. Blacks on every level, everywhere they go, face it. Justice Thurgood Marshall, before he passed on, fought a great battle against Plessy versus Ferguson coming up out of the Howard University School of Law. He later, when he spoke at Howard University, he said the Ku Klux Klan no longer just wears white sheep, sheets and white robes, but now wears black robes and blue uniforms. Hmm? Why is it so hard for black students to get the, a message of truth in the university newspaper? What is it called? Huh? The Familiar. Why? But a Klansman can write an open letter in the paper, and you give him a whole page or more. It's because you are a racist and a liar and a hypocrite, and the truth ain't in you. You got faculty and administrators running around here talking about what a hater I am, and you never even heard the tape. Never heard it. I was angry at King Cobb. I have a right to be angry. But you're so racist, so ethnocentric, so Eurocentric, so egocentric, until you don't even believe that black people have a right to hurt. We don't have a right to pain. You want us to forget everything that ever happened to us, but you teach us in your classroom, remember the Alamo, remember Pearl Harbor, remember Hitler, remember the Nazis. Anytime something evil happened to us, remember never again, but you should forget what happened to you. No, we have pain also. I went to view Schindler's List. I was to speak at Trenton State University, and I did. And Governor Christine Whitman supposedly to counter my speech at Trenton State. They determined in the state that the movie 
Schindler's List would be shown. I was compelled to go. I just had to go before I spoke at Trenton State. So I went to sit. I took my little son, nine-year-old son, Farrakhan Khalid, with me. Another brother who's a black Hebrew named Brother Shahid Israel Watson. Brother Dean and his son, Brother Shahid Israel's son, Asante. We went, just took our children, just a few of us. And I sat there, and I watched that screen. I was touched. I can't lie to you. I was moved by the human pain and suffering that I saw on that screen. But we have not only experienced the Holocaust, we've paid a hell of a cost. We lost over 250 million lives in the Middle Passage just coming over between Africa and America. Over a 6,000 year period, the black and darker people of the earth have lost over 600 million over a 6,000 year period. That's a terrible holocaust. And because we have suffered so much and experienced so much pain, there's no way I could sit there and not feel the pain of the people that I'm watching on the screen and watching Hitler's Nazis killing, abusing, misusing the Jewish people that were on the screen. But you know what? I didn't see one black SS soldier. I didn't see one man from Hitler's troops shooting the Jewish people in the head that was black. I saw white men killing white people. That's what I saw on the screen. The black man and the black woman have never done anything to the white man. We have never done anything to you for you to hate us. Never, never have we done anything to you. You say, well, he's like David Duke. He's, he's like Hitler. Shut up, fool. In fact, I'm embarrassed. I'm much more handsome than David Duke and Hitler. And my thinking is nowhere near Hitler's and David Duke's. My heart is nowhere near David Duke's and Hitler's. Let's reason together. Whites relax. It's not hatred. It's history. Let's reason. Let's reason. Let's dialogue. Look at it. Nobody ever robbed David Duke, the Ku Klux Klan, or Hitler, the Aryan Brotherhood, the skinheads. Nobody ever robbed them of their name, their language, their religion, their culture, their God, their folkways, their mores, their norms, the power of their own being. Nobody ever put them in slavery for 400 years. What are they griping about? It's just natural venom and hatred coming from them. But you're looking at the sons and daughters displaced in the death and decadence of the diaspora of the Western world. The sons and daughters of Africa, robbed of their names, their language, their religion, their culture, their God, robbed of their folkways, their mores, their norms, and the very power of their own being. Right here before you, every day. But nobody ever did anything to the Klan and the rest of them, the Dukes and the Hitlers. And these blacks have never done anything to you. I was angry at King College. I get sick of going places and whites are protesting and picketing outside. And Jews are outside who don't even know me. Who do we want? Far can. Who do we want? Far can. How do we want him? We want him dead. How do we want him? We want him dead. Death to fire can. Death to fire can. Death to fire can. Death to fire can. You don't expect that to make me angry. You call for the death of my leader. And you, you get words from me. You are lucky you got words from me. Praise it due to Allah. 
I want you to look at this the way we are taught by the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. We never go and write on the buildings of the Jewish people or any white people. Minister Robert is here. They'll tell you. We don't write the swastika. We don't put racial slurs and epithets on your buildings. We don't do that. We don't stand outside of your meetings and protest and harass and harangue the crowd that's coming in. We never do that, and we have never done it. And we will never do it. We don't go and desecrate the graves of your loved ones. We have never done it. We don't do it, and we will never do it. We don't stand outside and call for the death of your rabbis, call for the death of your white leaders. We never do that. But you come and call for the death of my leader at King College. You come and call for the death of my leader in Los Angeles, in Beverly Hills, in Century City, in the Midwest, throughout the country. So I was angry at King College. I was in a warlike posture. And so it became a famous speech. The president, Vice President Gore came out against me. The United States Senate, S-I-N, not S-E-N. The United States Senate voted unanimously against me. Then the House of Representatives voted unanimously. Well, 300 and something, not unanimously, 300 and majority against me. State assemblies. Governors, mayors, Negro leaders, Negro organizations, Negro preachers came out against me. We have a right to be angry. We have a right to be hurt. Brothers and sisters, as I begin to close up, I say to you that Freedom is a law of nature, and justice is deeply rooted in the universal order of things, and it is the divine intent of the almighty, all-wise God and creator that everything live equally under his creation. Those who are under the sound of my voice in this auditorium, the overflow crowd in the other auditorium. Where's the camera for that auditorium? Which side is it? On this side, the overflow crowd in the other auditorium, we say to you that it is time that we wake up. We must know the truth. Jesus said, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. We have to know the truth. If we're going to build any bridges at all, I don't know. If it's God's will, I don't know. The way this thing is going, it doesn't seem to be God's will at all. But if any bridges are to be built between the two people, the infrastructure of that bridge must be built and fabricated, and the very elements that go into making up the infrastructure of that bridge must be based on truth, fact, justice, fairness, equity. Otherwise, there is no bridge. We can't build a bridge and lie to each other. We can't pretend that everything is all right. We have to sit down and reason together, dialogue together. That's the only way it can be done. To the young whites who are sprinkled in this audience, let me say to you, we know that you did not put us in slavery. We're not blaming you. This is not some blanket, broad, sweeping indictment against you. You didn't put us in this condition. You didn't enslave us. You didn't rob us. You didn't rape us. But now the question is, are you any better than your foremothers and forefathers? You can't just say better. You must do better. You must do better. And if you can do better, then we expect to see you doing better. When you know better, you must show better. To the young blacks all over the world, as I said earlier, the revolution continues. 
In one part of the earth, the battle cry is a loot to continue. A loot to continue. The struggle continues. In another part of the planet, the battle cry is Pumberi, Pumberi na Chimarenga. Pumberi na Chimarenga. The struggle continues and victory is certain. Let's get it on. Let's get it on. In another part of the planet, the battle cry is Kadima, Kadima ya umila. Kadima, Kadima ya umila. I'm going on with God. Straight ahead. No force, no power, no combination of powers and forces. I'm going on with God. Kadima, straight ahead. Kadima, Kadima ya umila. In another part of the planet, as the revolution continues, the continues, the battle cry is, forward ever, forward ever, backward never. Forward ever, backward never, backward never. In another part of the planet, the battle cry is, Amanda, Amanda, Amanda we do. Power. Power belongs to us. Amanla, Amanla we do. Another part of the planet, the battle cry is, as the struggle, as the revolution continues, the battle cry is, Uhuru, Uhuru Sasa. Uhuru, Uhuru Sasa. Freedom, freedom now, not tomorrow. Not next year. Uhuru Sasa. Freedom. Freedom now. Another part of the planet, the battle cry is Allah. Allahu Akbar. Allah. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. God is the greatest. God is the greatest. That I bow down to no one or nothing except God. And God alone. Brothers and sisters, you must await to the young students who are here this tremendous dropout rate, this tremendous rate at which you run and transfer and just le be, uh, are left by the wayside. And whites are graduating at a much greater rate and pace than you on this campus. This must stop. You must be serious students when you enroll in one of the colleges and universities of white America. Some of you here in the state of Louisiana are the first in your family to ever make it to the university door. And so our people are depending on you. Our people are depending on you to get us out of the condition that we are in. And so you can't come here and waste your time. You can't come here drinking your time away Parting your time away. You got foul on one end and a fool on the other end. No, no good, black man. Awake. Shake thyself from the dust. The lion asleep. In Judah, a lion asleep in America, who will awaken her? Who will awaken him? Be serious students. Take serious nation building courses. Stop taking underwater bubble bath 101. <laughs> Advanced water coloring. What are you working on? I'm working on my doctorate degree, my PhD in advanced aerobicsology. I'm going to be an aerobicsologist. Give me a break. Don't duck chemistry. Don't duck physics. Chemistry is the science of the Chimmy people from Chimet. No, I'm saying. Don't duck chemistry. Don't duck, duck biology. Don't duck physics. Don't duck agriculture. Don't duck agronomy. Don't duck, right, if I didn't say it, animal husbandry. 
Don't duck mathematics and geometry. Don't duck it. You are living mathematics. You are living biology. You are living chemistry. When Michael Jordan used to play, did he come down the court with that tongue hanging out? Stop dribbling at half court and start flying the rest of the way. Pass the top of the key. Pass the free throw line. Make a 360 degree geometric turn. Stick that tongue out. Throw that leg out. Slam dunk backwards over his head. That's mathematics. That's physics. That's matter in harmony with law. Black woman with stuff stacked on top of her head this high, this high, this high. Walk up the mountain, don't drop nothing. Walk down the mountain, don't drop nothing. That's mathematics. That's physics. That's matter in harmony with law. Take nation building courses. Awake. Shake thyself from the dust. Get up, lion and lioness. You once ruled the earth after God's law, and thus saith the Lord. And now it is time for you to wake up. The revolution continues. Wake up. Respect yourself. Clean your morals up. Respect yourself, black woman. Respect the black woman, black man. I heard about you here at Southwestern. I heard about you. I told you I came in here incognito and did my research. You wear your ex cap, your ex hat, your ex t shirt, your ex sweatshirt. You import ex potato chips in from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. But you don't want to come to Minister Robert Muhammad. You don't want to come to Minister Lyle X. You don't want to come to Minister Harold. You don't want to come to Minister Ted. Who are all these ministers up here? Minister Rashid Baton Rouge. Minister, give me your names. Minister Hillman in Shreveport. Minister Chris in Alexandria. Minister Tommy in Lake Charles. Who else? Give me that. I'll get to you. I'm saving the best for the last. Huh? What's the name? Minister Delaney, Fort Worth. Minister Chris X, Gramlin. Sister, Sister Stanley in what city? In Hammond, Louisiana. You don't want to come to these sisters and brothers because they are the experts who have the experience who can explain. You want to wear your X externally, but you don't want to wear it internally. You just saw the X and got excited. You just saw the X and got excited. You want to wear your X, black man, at South... Is this Southwestern? I'm on so many campuses at Southwestern, but you want to have a white girl on your elbow. No good, black man. No good. No good. No good. Well... We got some, we got some ex lax, which is the quickest relief for your jungle fever, and we're gonna get it all out of your system here tonight. No, 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 no! Don't get me wrong. White girl is all right for the white boy. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I understand. Love transcends all boundaries. Love knows no color line. I understand that. But I'm talking about rebuilding the black family and putting the black man and the black woman back together again. That's what I'm talking about here tonight. Ain't got nothing to do with racism, nothing to do with hatred. It's got to do with the love of the black family after 400 years of slavery, suffering, and death. That's what I'm talking about here tonight. All praise is due to Allah. This is a love revival. All we want, we're talking about bringing the black family back together. 
after 400 years of the decimation of our ranks and the destruction of the black family. Black man, respect your woman. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad and the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan say, Awake! Shake yourself from the dust. The revolution continues. No nation can rise higher than its woman. Woman is the hallmark of civilization. Woman is the hallmark of civilization. Where there are no decent women, there can be no decent men. Because women are the first nurses, they are the first doctors, they are the first teachers. They are the divine expression of God's own benevolence and love and mercy. Mother is she who nourishes a thing in accord with its nature until it reaches maturity and develops toward perfection. Woman, mother, is the divine agent of God, his divine representative. Black woman, you are the mother of civilization, the queen of the planet Earth, goddess of the universe. Wake up to who you are and stop trying to be like Susie and Kathy and Heather. Accept your own and be your beautiful black self. Accept your own and be your beautiful black self. Heather is all right. Cindy, Amy, Kathy, Jill, they are all right. But when you know the glory of being a black woman, then you don't want to be nothing but what God has made you to be. Black woman, you all out on the dance floor with your backside all up in a man's face. And you are all there, and the black man, he's, woo! And got another black man in front, woo! And you out in the middle of the floor with your backside up with a man grinding on you. No good, black woman. No good. No good. No good, black woman. No good. You're the mother of civilization. You're the mother of civilization. You're the queen of the planet Earth. You're the goddess of the universe. No good, black woman. Wear these tight, 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 tight. tight. So tight until they make a V in the front and arrow that points to the point. I'm an alarm clock here tonight. I'm an alarm clock here tonight. You can't sleep. I'm not going to allow you to sleep. I'm going to tap dance on your casket. <laughs> Until you get up after four days, Lazarus and Lazarine. No. Black woman walking around with no bra on, just popping all through your clothes and bouncing all in the man's face. You know the eyes are made to follow moving objects. Walk down one of these aisles and one of these churches and one of these schools, babies start crying, the dress cut so low they think it's feeding time. Awake, awake, black man and black woman. Arise, shake thyself from the dust, the Bible says. Look at it. We got to get up. We got to clean up or we out of luck with God. We can't build a nation unto God with immorality, indecency, freakish licentiousness, that the same corruption that exists in the other world. Otherwise, our world will come down under the weight of its own corruption. No, we got to clean this thing up. You got to clean. Respect me for my mind, honey. Respect me for my mind. Well, why you didn't show him your mind? You attract a man on the nobility of your character. 
the nobility of your character, your spirituality, how you line up with thus saith the Lord, the word of God and the law of God on your charm, on your grace, on your dignity, on your wit, on your intelligence. Not on 36, 22, 36 and think you got it all figured out. <laughs> respect yourself. Black man, you respect yourself. The black woman is not looking for a man who will just reflect on God. She's looking for a man who will reflect God. She wants to see God in the man. She wants to see the Allah awareness. She wants to experience the Christ consciousness. The Christ consciousness and the Allah awareness. The Bible said, let this same mind that is in Christ Jesus be also in you. What mind was in Christ Jesus? The mind of God. So of the same mind that is in Christ Jesus, the mind of God can be also in you, black man. You, black woman. Black man, you are ruler by nature. We got to arise. Awake. We can't be a people groveling at the feet of another people begging for welfare and food stamps. Builders, and now we are project dwellers trying to make white folks accept us in the Moss Street housing project. And they saying, not fair, not welfare, farewell, niggas. Farewell. Burn a cross in our sister's yard. In 1994, but you call me a racist. You call me a hater. You call me a bigot. Word. Will the real racist, the real hater, the real bigot, the real anti-Semite please fess up? From pyramid builders to project dwellers, the white man is in trouble. God has put him in trouble. The judgment of Almighty God has entered into the shores of America already. Irregular rain, snow, hail, and earthquake. Snow piling up, stacking up. Then when the snow melts, the snow creates flooding conditions. White man worried about drought. The earth scorched and parched, the cattle dying. And then he, heard, he hopes for rain, and rain comes, and then it rains too much. Drown everything out. Tornadoes, twisters, hurricanes, earthquakes in diverse places, as the book of Matthew in the 24th chapter said. God is angry today. God's hand is stretched out against America, this strange land, and this strange people that we have been under for the past 400 years. God is angry today. Look at it for what it's worth. For the wicked mistreatment of his chosen people. IBM is in trouble. General Motors is in trouble. Xerox is in the Clorox. Eastern Airlines. TWA trying to rearrange its finances. American Airlines. Midway. Only made it midway, halfway, couldn't make it the rest of the way. <laughs> America used to be the number one lender nation of the world. Now America is the number one debtor nation. God's hand of judgment is stretched out against America. And so in the book of Revelations it says, Come out of her, my people. Come out of her that ye be not receivers in her plagues and partakers in her sins. Come out of her. Another scripture says, Woe unto the inhabitants of the land and the sea, for Satan the devil has come down with great wrath, for he knows that he has but a short time to live. The white man's time is up. For evil, racism, sexism, 
immorality, indecency, that time is up. And it is your moral responsibility, black man and black woman, to stand up, accept your own, and be yourself, and get this planet back in order the way you had it in order in the beginning. That's your moral responsibility. You have a divine rendezvous with destiny. It is your manifest destiny that you accept your divine calling and commission from Almighty God. I close saying that every law in the Louisiana State Penal Code, every law in the Federal Penal Code, the white man broke it in order to establish America. What's our lawyer's name? Brother Attorney Joseph Guillory is up here with us. Every law, the white man broke it to establish this state called Louisiana and to establish the United States of America sometimes called the United Snakes of America. That's what Benjamin Franklin called it and others. They had a snake and the snake was all dismembered and they were trying to put the union back together, put the snake back together. Here's the people that call themselves snake. The United Snakes of America. Huh? Let's take a poll in here and we'll be ready to go. How many of you say, and I want to see a show of hands, I want to poll the jury that the white man, in order to establish the state of Louisiana and the United States, how many say he committed armed robbery? Let me see your hand. Hands down. They murdered our brothers and sisters, our family, the red man and red woman. Murdered us, came to Africa. How many say the white man committed kidnapping? Let me see your hand. Is that in the Louisiana Penal Code? Yes. Is it in the Federal Penal Code? Yes. How many say he committed in order to establish this state and the United States of America? How many say he committed grand larceny, petty larceny? How many say he committed rape? I mentioned earlier, how many say he I want to see this again. How many say he committed kidnapping? That should be every hand in the house because you exhibit A. Exhibit O. You wouldn't be here if someone hadn't kidnapped you. Every law in the state and federal penal code, the white man broke it in order to establish these states and the United States of America. But you call me a racist. You call me a hater. You call me a bigot and an anti-Semite when you are the real hater, the real bigot and the real anti-Semite, and you hate for us to hold the mirror up in front of your face so that you could be exposed today. We need a revolution of our minds. I'm so sorry about what I've heard about Holy Rosary. And I know many of you have not, many of us have not given up that battle in hopes that even though it is in the state and situation that it is in now that maybe God has an even greater plan for Holy Rosary. <laughs> One thing we know, that it will no longer be business as usual. Let me say this to you too. Stop running around here like a fool talking about you occasion. Please. This is a battle brother Takuna with Ujamai has been fighting forever. Our brother uh, Alfred uh, Maxiel, is that his name? We met with him with the Southern, and Father McKnight with the Southern Consumers Cooperative and the uh, Southern Consumers Education Foundation. We're not Cajuns. You're an original black man and black woman from another historical point that needs clearing up at another time you are the African black man and black woman you're not a Cajun you want to be everything but what you are because you've been so robbed of a knowledge of self we're just so divided today I'm 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 Omega sci-fi I'm, 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 I'm Kappa Alpha Psi. 
I'm, 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 I'm Alpha Phi Alpha. I'm, I'm, I'm Phi Beta Sigma. I'm DST, honey. I'm Alpha Kappa Alpha. I'm Sigma Gamma Rho. I'm Z Phi B, honey, see me. Nothing wrong with the sororities and the fraternities if we will live according to the sublime, high, and noble cardinal principles that the founding mothers and the founding fathers gave to us. Nothing wrong. But I say to you, black Greeks, where is your black Greek bank? Where is your black savings alone, Greek savings alone? Where is your black Greek supermarket? Where is your black Greek hospital? Where is your black Greek housing development? The white folks have big fraternity and sorority houses. We don't even have a fraternity or sorority house. We're meeting in an apartment and a room in the shack in the back. Stop this tribalism. Stop this tribalism. Take these fraternities and sororities and make them viable for black people. And to all of you, you engineering majors, you psychology majors, you sociology majors, all of you majors, and you right here on the campus and our people catching hell out in the community of Lafayette, and you won't go out and work among our people in the community. What in the hell is wrong with you? Stop this tribalism. I'm a mason. I'm an elk. I'm a shriner. I'm an eastern star. I'm an eye of Rebecca. I'm one of the daughters of the Amaranth. I'm one of the eyes of Rebecca. I'm, I'm a moose. I'm an elk. You're a turkey. That's what it is. I'm, 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 I'm a white collar worker. I'm a blue collar worker. I'm a fool with no shirt on. Ah, <laughs> I'm with the Democratic Party. I'm, <laughs> I'm with the Republican Party. Fool, you're not even invited to the party. <laughs> and it ain't even that kind of party. Whoop, there it is. There it is. It ain't even that kind of party. I'm AME. I'm AME Zion. I'm CME. I'm ME. I'm Elijah Muhammad Louis Farrakhan, Nation of Islam. I'm Silas Muhammad, Nation of Islam. I'm John Muhammad, Nation of Islam. John Muhammad in Chicago. Oh, no, I'm not with that. I'm John Muhammad in Chicago. I'm the Prepared One, Nation of Islam. I'm Abbas Rasul, Nation of Islam. I'm Theodore Hamza, Nation of Islam. I'm Sunni Muslim. I'm Shia Muslim. I'm Ahmadiyya Muslim. I'm just a Muslim, 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 Muslim. I'm this kind of black Hebrew. I'm another kind of black Hebrew, and I'm the other kind of black Hebrew. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Just leave me alone. I'm church of God in Christ. I'm church of God out of Christ. Well, I'm church of God over Christ. Well, I'm church of God under Christ. Because I'm church of God, we ain't got no Christ. I'm church of Christ, we ain't got no God. Hell, we just having church, ain't got no God, ain't got no Christ. Hell, we just holding church. I'm this kind of Catholic. I'm that kind of Catholic. I'm another kind of Catholic. I'm the other kind of Catholic. I'm, 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 I'm just, I don't know what the hell I am. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, we've got to wake up. The revolution continues accept our own and be ourselves and learn to pull together and love ourselves and respect ourselves and practice Kuji Chagulia self-determination as a people Ujima and Ujima and Nia and Kurumba and Imani and Umoja and build our lives on the principles of Mayat truth, justice, righteousness, harmony balance, order, and reciprocity found in the Bible another way, found in the Holy Quran another way, but still the nature of the black man and the black woman. That's our duty. That's our calling. That's our responsibility. A lion asleep in Judah, he must, she must be awakened. Arise, awake, shake thyself 
from the dust, black man and black woman. I thank you for listening. Assalamu alaikum. Hotep. Alafia. Free the land. Odabo. And Tuta Onana. In Dugu Dada. Put your black fists in the air, and the whites who are in the audience join in with us. Put your fists in the air, and in the other auditorium, put your fists in the air. We're going to do seven Harambe's. And Harambe in Kiswahili means, let us all pull together. What does it mean? What does it mean in the other auditorium? I'm sure they answered, let us all pull together. Don't you hear we're going to do it seven times. This is only a demonstration. Your fist is in the air and you come down. Harambe! You go back up. Harambe! Each time you count one and you do that six times. And on the seventh time, you hold it. Harambe! All right, put your fist in the air. Let us all pull together. Harambe on the count of three. Jali two. Harambe! 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 Thank you, brothers and sisters. Positions, please. Can everyone please stand back up? Thank you, brother. That was... I'm speechless. <laughs> it was wonderful, wonderful. We have some presentations for you this evening from some of the students, and we have some words from members of the community that would like to address you. Brother Takuna. Welcome, brother, and may Allah continue to bless and guide you. We want to present you with two tokens of our appreciation. One is a plaque, and one I will explain to you. The plaque is to show our appreciation and to acknowledge to you that the once slave of America here in Southwest Louisiana no longer falls under the influence of the powerful media, print, radio, and television to determine for us who our friends are and who our enemies are. We love you, we protect you, and we will support you. We give you this plaque, and it reads, to our brother, friend, and leader, Dr. Khaled Mohammed, for your courage and boldness in speaking the truth in the name of Allah for the liberation of black people. We support and appreciate you from the Ujima Committee, the Rising Seed Newspaper, and the newly formed Black World Power Organization, and the black community here in Southwest Louisiana. We have a second token of appreciation for you being here. It's creative, and it's our gift to you. We know that the knowledge of black people has been taken away and bottled up somewhere. And it's going to take strong black men and women, like yourself, that Allah is raising up to find those bottles of knowledge. We know the situation that you have come under with the media. But we want to give you an original bottle opener from Ghana. We want you to remain in search of the truth and pop those bottles of truth open so that we may drink the spirit of truth. We love you, brother.
Father Carlos. Dr. Khalid, on behalf of the founder of the African American Catholic Congregation, the Most Reverend Archbishop George Augusta Stallings, Jr., on behalf of Imani Temple Number 49, we want to say, brother, it's been great seeing you once again. It's been, being, it's been great for you waking us up. The alarm clock has been ringing. Our eyes are open. On behalf of the ancestors, we thank you. On behalf of the freedom fighters, we thank you. On behalf of the men and women who have no voice, who have no representative, we say thank you. And in our language of Kiswahili, we say, Asante sana, and hurry back, my brother. I would now ask that Brother Jamad Williams from the Commit Mile organization, please come up. Man, well, I'm not much of a speaker like the two brothers right there. But um, all right. on behalf of the Commit Mile organization, I'd like to give you this reminder that you are not alone, and we are all brutalized by these drive-by cameras you know, the drive-bys, and um, you are not alone in, this, in your struggle. And it reads, Honor Honorary Member of Commit Mile, presented to Dr. Khalid Abdul-Muhammad for your continuing efforts in the struggle. Keep striving. From the Commit Mile Organization, Louisiana, 1994. Brother, on behalf of the African American Culture Committee, aka AACC, we would like to thank you for taking your precious time out to be with us here this evening at this university. We thank you and we love you and we support you in all that you do. Thank you. And to the members of the African American Culture Committee, I salute you for being wonderful individuals that stand up for what you believe in. Thank you, brothers and sisters. And thank you all. Thank all of you for coming out this evening. Would you let them know in the other auditorium that if they would permit us, we'd like to run right over to the other auditorium. In the other auditorium, if you would just hold where you are, we're going to run over to the other auditorium and greet some of our brothers and sisters over there and shake some of your hands. I wish I could shake every hand here, the blacks, the whites, especially the blacks. <laughs> to the whites, don't get funny with us because I said that it's a black thing you wouldn't understand. <laughs> Thank you all for coming this evening. <laughs> Lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring. Ring with the harmonies of liberty let our rejoicings rise high as the listening skies let it resound loud as the rolling sea Sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song 
full of the hope that the present has brought us, facing the rising sun of a new day begun. Let us march on till victory. Thank you, Sister Taniqua. That was beautiful.